white women. Watch this video and I'll be right back. I don't know why, but as a white woman, I love correcting other white women about black hair. I don't know why. Marginalized cultures like African slaves don't pass things on to white people. White people steal those things. That's called cultural appropriation. Like this or this. So I'd like to talk about this absolutely fantastic article I just saw a couple weeks ago about the history of black hairstyles. Now before I even get into the various African cultures that you seem to be such an expert on, let's talk about African American culture. Growing up, many black women have fond memories of sitting between the legs of mothers and aunties, head tilted to one side as our hair was tightly braided. It's almost a rite of passage, sitting for hours, a sore scalp, the soothing feeling of cool gel running between the neatly parted braids at the end. Considering you don't even know what Bantu knots are, I'm gonna go ahead and assume that that's not part of your culture. It is absolutely a major fixture in black cultures. Bantu knots, along with other types of hairstyles, became popular in the 1500s amongst African slaves in South America. A Bantu knot symbolized that a person was heading towards a mountainous area and signaled other slaves to either follow them, help conceal them, or aid them in some other way. Bantu knots, not twisty buns or whatever you call them. Tight braids gathered up in a bun called departes symbolized to other slaves that a slave was about to leave and that their departure was imminent. Cornrows are called cornrows because slaves would often take seeds and kernels of corn or various other crops so that they could take them with them to their new settlement and start crops for their own people once they escaped. Our ancestors would place rice, seeds, and sometimes gold on the scalp between two sections of hair. They did this so that if they were captured and forced to voyage across the Atlantic, they'd at least have a small amount of food for sustenance. Form follows function. That function was survival and escape. And if you are not respectful and mindful of the mindset of those people when they created these hairstyles, you don't know what a Bantu knot is, then you don't get to argue with black people about their hair. Culture is about experience. Culture is personal and emotional. It's funny, I've been looking at all these pictures and I can't find any with any white people in them. Why do you think that is? That's what I'm talking about. That is someone that understood the assignment. <laughs> yes. It's more than just hair. God. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> I'm one of those teachers that when I see a student, now I'm not saying she's actually a student of mine or anything like that, but I'm a type of person when I'm teaching and I see people getting it, it just gives me so much excitement. <laughs> it's like, yes! Yes, you got it! <laughs> I love it, I love it, I love it. Let me know what you think in the comment section about how, um, damn, I lost my train of thought and I'm not redoing this. Let me know in the comment section what you think about this video. Remember, diversity equal power. We can change the world when we work together and protect black women. Until next time.